Hey creative friends, welcome to my channel and this video is another recipe for the amazing Shelf Stable Pantry Recipes collaboration. I'm so excited about this collaboration because there's so many really, really good channels doing some really, really good recipes. So before I go on, I want you to make sure that you check out the description box because there will be a link to create this notebook, these covers and this little side piece for you to be able to print these recipes off and keep them in your pantry so that if you ever need to, you can grab this book and have some great recipes. And you know what? Don't just wait for an emergency to use these recipes because they're all great all year long for any reason. But anyway, this is a great collaboration and it's a so much fun. And so this one is going to be still sticking with my theme of using oats. This will probably be my last oat recipe, but we're going to be making oat tortillas, which are going to be awesome and they're super fun and you can get those and you can make them super easy all year long. So if you want to print the recipe that I'm going to give you for my videos, there will be a link for these covers for this book. But for my recipe, you just need to highlight it and then click print your selected, you know, what you selected and it'll print the recipe out and then you can keep it in the book. Uh, some other channels might have a link um, to it because they might have a website where it's at. But for mine, just copy and then print uh, the highlighted uh, section. So let's get started making some oat tortillas. All right, to make your oat tortillas, it's actually really simple. You need four ingredients, and they're they're really easy ingredients to have on your pantry shelf, or um, you know things that you can get to easily keep on your pantry shelf. And of course, I have my rolled oats. So for this recipe, you'll need two cups of rolled oats, one to one and a half cups of water. I just start with one cup uh, because you can add the extra half a cup if you need it, and I'll show you why you may need it. And then there's going to be half a teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. Now, this is the nutritional yeast that I have. And if you've never used this before, it is not a yeast that you would use in bread. So it's not something, it's, it's uh, deactivated. So it won't rise bread like, you know, your regular yeast would. But this is pretty popular for... Um, Vegan recipes oftentimes will call for this. This is just good stuff to put on popcorn or on vegetables or potatoes, anything, because it gives kind of a, I want to say like a cheesy, buttery, cheesy flavor to things. And it's really good because it's super high in protein. So it's a nice thing to have on your shelf. Here's my warning though. It is very high in fiber as well. So if you've never used nutritional yeast, don't just start throwing it in everything or you will notice that you have increased your fiber. And sometimes that's not always fun. So um, so there's nutritional yeast, and I like to use that. And I like, actually, you know what's really good? Is just sprinkle it on green beans. So good. Okay, oh, mashed potatoes too. But super simple. So I've got my water, my oats, my nutritional yeast, and my salt right here. Let me move this. I'll move this cool binder. There you go. And what you do to start with, you can use a bowl, but I'm just going to use my blender because ultimately it's going to end up in the blender anyway. So you put your two cups of oats in there and you put your one cup of water. Let me get that little oat and put it in there. Some of them came out. Don't want to miss them. Okay. So then you put your one cup of water in there and your yeast and your salt. And then I'm going to kind of get a little spoon and mix that around in there. Let me get my little short spatula. There we go. So you're just going to mix that up. So you're going to add them all in here. So you can add them to a bowl, but I'm just going to add them here. Now I'm obviously going to need some more water because it needs to soak for about an hour so that it all becomes um, pretty, pretty soaked. Hang on, let me get another half a cup of water. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put that half a cup in there. Now, if you're using quick oats, um, it'll absorb a lot faster, but we're gonna let this sit. Oh, I can smell the nutritional yeast. It smells like all cheesy buttery. So good. So now I'm gonna let this soak for an hour. When we're done with that hour, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna blend this up to make a thinner than pancake batter batter. And then it's just a matter of putting it on your uh, nonstick electric skillet or griddle or if you're really good with your cast iron skillet so we're gonna let that soak and I'll be back in about an hour all right these have set for about an hour and I can tell they're gonna need a little bit more uh, water in there so I'm just gonna add a little bit more water and then I'm just gonna 
run them through the blender until they become uh, until it becomes kind of like a soft pancake batter. So I'm going to start blending this up. I'm not going to have you watch because it's loud, and I'll come back to you in just a second. All right, there we go. I've got a hot pan. It's at about 325 to 350, and I've got some olive oil in there, so it's nice and hot. Now the consistency of this is just thinner than pancake batter, and I'm going to take it by quarter cup increments, kind of make a nice circle. Technically, I think I could thin this batter out a little bit, but we'll go for here. Yeah, maybe I'll add a little bit more water. Let me add a little water. Because it should kind of spread a little bit better than that one did. Ah, oh, this looks a little better. Okay. Let's see how that spreads. You see the difference? This one gets a lot bigger as it spreads. And add a little bit more to it. Make it bigger because I want these to be a bigger tortilla because this is going to be used for fish tacos. So I'm going to let those cook. Add a little bit more of this one. Make it a little bigger. There we go. Now I'm going to let those cook until they're nice and brown and then I'm going to flip them over and I will come back to you after I give them a little flip and we see how they turned out. Okay, I've got a few of these in here. Here's one of the first ones, and I'm just letting them brown up a little bit. Um, they're a little bit thicker than I would prefer, but they'll be fine. So you can see how it kind of cooks up like a tortilla on the outside. Now, these are thick, so they kind of remind me of, um, like, the street taco ones, which is fine. But I just like to keep turning them so that they cook all the way through, and they get that kind of that outside of, like, the tortilla. Now, let me... Let me throw, toss this one for you. See how it is. I'm going to turn it over. See that? Looks just like a tortilla. See? All right, so I'm going to finish these up, and then I'm going to put together some fish tacos, and I'll bring you back and show you the finished product. So basically, this is your shelf-stable part. This is what you could do if you needed bread or, like, tortillas or whatever, and all you had was your shelf-stable ingredients. But, because I don't need these for shelf-stable reasons, I'm going to put these together and make uh, fish tacos for lunch. All right, there we go. I have three fish tacos for each of us, and all I have was some frozen fish fillets I put in there, and a little bit of coleslaw with some tartar sauce mixed in, and cheese on top, and that's what I'm using my shelf-stable recipe for in an everyday way. Okay, you guys, Brian has checked it out. He actually thinks they're pretty good. I know you already took a bite. They're good. They're like um, they're like a, one of those little thick kind of corn tortillas, aren't they? Like a street taco. See, I am using my napkin. You are. <laughs> oh, good. All right. Well, there you guys go. Good job. Thanks. That's how I used the shelf-stable recipe in an everyday way. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.